Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, you may have seen there, there's only one guest. There's supposed to be two. There will be two. Uh, there's just the two of us uh, at the moment. Good evening. Welcome uh, to the program. Um, two of us, only one topic of conversation uh, this evening. Uh, the first uh, three or four minutes of the show are going to be very unbalanced, but the rest of the show will be uh, absolutely perfect seesaw between the owls and the blades. Lewis Buxton, uh, Sheffield Wednesday's uh, one time, well, quite recent, uh, overlapping right back or right wing back who set up uh, a very famous Derby goal scored by Chris O'Grady a few minutes ago has timed his run rather badly uh, this evening uh, has left him just two miles short of the studio as we speak so he'll be making a dramatic dash uh, and another overlap and will join uh, in the seat next to me here uh, John Osborne now John Osborne is a professional journalist of long standing, has been for many, many years. Uh, he started at the what was then the Morning Telegraph in, in Sheffield, a morning newspaper. A lot of people won't realise that Sheffield once had a morning newspaper. And currently, Blades fans will know him as, if they follow you on Twitter, Mr. At View from John Street. The actual website is view from the John Street dot com which is a great play on words john yep, yep. and all things blades are blogged uh, on it. there yes uh, it's good of you to join us uh, you you don't actually live in sheffield but you're here for a special reason uh, at the moment yes well, i'm here to be on your show that's the special yes. reason but um yeah um it, well the sheffield derby of course I mean, we can't ignore that no i don't i don't, I don't think we should do you <laughs> except that except that every person of, a, of, a, of either allegiance who's been on this show in recent weeks has kind of, I'm no longer surprised, but have surprised me by saying they hate it, they want it over with. It doesn't matter whether they're red or blue. Are you the same? I've been, this, I've been the lone, I thought I was a lone voice. I, I hate the Sheffield Derby. Uh, well, I, I can't even sleep this week because of the Sheffield Derby. <clears throat> um, I've never liked it and I never will. It's, it's one of those things. But what surprised me is the number of people this year who are now coming out and saying they don't like the Sheffield Derby yeah. either for whatever reason. And I think it's just it's just the fear of losing, I suppose, at the end of the day. It, I mean, it's all right to lose against Norwich or Wolves or whoever it might be, but not against your nearest rivals. Yeah, there's a trend for people now <laughs> to admit things, isn't there? Yeah. You yeah. know, to, to come and say, OK, all right, I suffer from depression or whatever, sadly. But people are, you know, the, the spark was there. A journalist, Danny Hall, has written a great book about the Blades, yeah. sat where you are a few weeks ago and said he hated it, like wished yeah. it never took place kind of thing. Well, I, I saw uh, that, but a few weeks previous to that, I, I had actually interviewed him for his book. Yeah. Uh, for, for his book on, on my blog. And... Um, I thought I didn't like the Sheffield Derby until I talked to Danny, and he really doesn't like the Sheffield. No. I mean, it, it is an ingrained thing with him. Yeah. Also, he has a struggle saying the, the word Wednesday. You've just said it. But I yeah. don't. I don't mind. You've not had a problem. No. You've not had a problem. I don't you mind. even allowed a fellow journalist who's a Wednesday eye, Andy Elliott, who we both know, a good friend of both of us, yeah. onto your blog this week. I did. So instead of a blog from you about the Blades prospects tomorrow night at Bramall Lane. Uh, by the way, yeah, Sheffield United v Sheffield Wednesdays tomorrow night at Bramway. Somebody just doesn't know that. <laughs> just kind of dropped in from Mars or something. You allowed him the space. I did. I, I did. And I, and I had to drag him onto the website because he didn't want to do it. Um, but I, I forced him to do it. I've been, I asked him last year and he, he didn't. He let me down. So, well, to be fair, he didn't <laughs> let me down. He just didn't want to do it. But this year, I started early. I started about two months before kickoff. And I think I just pressured him into doing it. And I was quite uh, happy because I thought he wrote a good piece as well. Yeah, me too. I mean, one thing <coughs> he, he amplified, uh, which needed saying, and I was really pleased when late, uh, you know, a couple of hours after you put that on, uh, Chris Wilder, the Sheffield United manager, said the same thing. Steel City Derby is yeah. a, a media invention, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not quite sure where that came from. I mean... Um, it always used to be the Sheffield Derby, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, well, it still is for me, <coughs> uh, old-fashioned, mm. but it was an attempt to put a sexy stamp yeah. on a television event, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. I suppose it, it makes sense, doesn't it? It's Steel City. It is the Steel City, yeah. but 
Um, yeah, I think most people, I, I, like Andy said in his piece, I don't think people say you're going to the Steel City Derby tomorrow night. They you don't. Know, they they no. don't say that. Really. Going to the Derby. Yeah. Going yeah. to Derby. Going to Derby. Yeah. 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 And you are under sufferance. But it's amazing. <laughs> I, okay, all right, I'm a neutral. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I don't enjoy the tiptoeing on eggshells and the build up to it in my remarks or articles or comments that I make because you're at pains to you know, your pains to be balanced mm. and <laughs> you're on eggshells, so it's very hard to be balanced. But the actual event I'm looking forward to because unlike you, I'm seeing it from both sides. Well, yeah, if you're a neutral, I suppose you can just sit back and watch the match, can't you? But yeah, I mean, even last um, September, was it at Hillsborough? Yeah, I mean, that was a marvellous, uh, after the event, that was a marvellous event and all the, yeah. the bouncing and all that, they, you know, I mean, that, that'll go down in, in history, won't it? They, uh, the, how how uh, Mark Duffy stopped that bounce within 30 seconds of um, Wednesday equalising. It will do. But from, an, from my point of view, I mean, I'm sit, sat there in the Leppings Lane and we're winning 2-0 and you think, oh, you know, this is it. And of course, the blades being the blades, next minute it's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. You've got your heart in your mouth. And um, so, yeah, so even though we then took the lead and, and in the end ran out quite quite easy winners, um, until that final whistle going, you really don't know what's going right. to happen. So. There must have been part of that game you enjoyed. <clears throat> uh, no. Last 10 minutes, perhaps. I know. No. no. I, I, I know. No, it's... Um, because that, that last 10 minutes, you think, I've One seen, goal. I've watched, anybody who's watched Sheffield United knows what can happen in the last 10 minutes when you watch, when, you know, for the Blades. So, uh, you know, you can't, I mean, even even when they're playing a team, you know, that you expect them to beat. Yeah. And we're 2-0 up at Bramall Lane with 40 minutes to go. Yeah. I always say to my mate next to me, we need another goal. Yeah. Because until we get three, I can't relax. Yeah, I'm sure that applies to every single manager. It's amazing how many, how often a team will have the better of a game and be 2 0 up. But it yeah. just takes that one goal conceded five minutes from time to leave everybody hanging on and biting fingernails and things like that. Yeah, okay, Lewis Buxton, the she former Sheffield Wednesday right back, uh, is joining us very shortly. He's been a hero and a villain. Well, not in that order. He's been a villain first and a hero of these uh, fixtures in derbies. He scored through his own goal. I don't know if you remember that. That was uh, uh, at Bramall Lane. Um, I think it was actually in front of the, the Wednesday fans as well. And it meant that uh, Sheffield United took a 3-0 lead. That was in September 2009, exactly sort of nine years ago, just over nine years ago. That finished 3-2 to the Blades. Uh, but then on March the 5th, 2012, he crossed uh, and Chris O'Grady headed home for a 1-0 Wednesday win at Hillsborough. Now, those two... Uh, events he's seen both sides of it psychologically and mentally have and his experiences at the time um, which he took very much to heart uh, he's put to, to great benefit because he's now become a performance consultant for players and their families on the mental side of football and he runs that consultancy now so Lewis is going to be a fascinating guest coming up the only thing he can't organise is getting here <laughs> on time. So I think that that would ordinarily be a fine, wouldn't it? He's probably going through mental torment as, as we speak, trying to park his car. He probably is. Yeah. He probably is. That is the mental torment. So, um, if I dare ask you, John, um, you've avoided writing <laughs> about this fixture in your, in your blog or, mm. you know, making any kind of prediction. How do you see it going? Um, I don't make predictions. <clears throat> uh, only because I've been watching Sheffield United too long to, to make predictions. But all I will tell you is I had a dream a few nights ago uh, and we won 3-1. Really? So I'm hoping that that's probably going to be about right. But I, yeah. I, I really don't know. Nobody knows. Anything I mean, that's the thing. People say, make us a prediction, tell us what's going on. I mean, yeah. Nobody can do that. The, the, the worrying thing about this, this particular derby yeah. is we are in a particularly good place at the moment um, and Wednesday are not uh, yeah. and if we're going to play them we have to play them yeah 
this is a good moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just thinking, you know, it makes you think, yes, we're, you know, we're going to enjoy ourselves tomorrow night. But that's a danger because uh, you could have said that about the previous one in January. Yeah. I mean, uh, they got a manager who'd just been appointed. He didn't even know the players. True. They came to, came to the lane. We were, you know, doing okay at that point. Yeah. Um, they were down to 10 men and we can't score. No. You know, so uh, it ended up nil-nil and everybody's, well, Wednesday weren't, but certainly Blades were disappointed. So, you know, you just can't, you, you can't really say. So it's well, better not to. Some Wednesday fans have been virtually <laughs> prepared to concede it this way, almost saying, oh, if it's only 1-0 or 2-1, we'll be glad that's like a victory. I think we'll <laughs> lose 3 or 4-0. I think they're starting to do that for psychological reasons now, to put all the pressure yeah. on, on United. Um, however, I did think there was something significant about that, uh, that game, that 0-0, which I think um, Chris Wilder might exploit this time, because I thought, and it's a feeling I had at the time, uh, and one or two <coughs> others who watched it felt the same, that was the only time I've seen a, a Wilder team, I thought, not really going for it, not really going fully for it. It was yeah. there for the taking, they're playing against 10, Billy yeah. Sharp stayed on the bench, which Chris admitted later might have been a mistake. I think it was. Yeah, it was. You know, yeah. and yeah. he was he was the one player Wednesday didn't want to see. Yeah. And I think the psyche will be, let's not be in that position again where we're looking back no. thinking, hey, we did because yeah. that's the trademark of United, isn't it? Every game, yeah. whoever they play, they yeah. go for it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. The, that, that game, they were a bit. I don't know whether they were nervous or what, but it, they, they certainly didn't start out like they normally start right. and even when Wednesday went down to 10 men uh, we didn't we didn't up our game we just carried on as we were and uh, as you say Billy Sharp wasn't picked he was on the bench but if ever there was a match in the, in the last 15 20 minutes for Billy Sharp to come on it was that it was that in front of the cop yeah. um, against Wednesday mm. you know he needs no motivation, does he, Billy Sharp? No. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and he, 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 he put James Wilson on, didn't he, instead? He did. Well, yeah. James Wilson, a very talented young striker, but he does. He yeah. seemed to operate outside the area, not in, and needed somebody in there. Yeah. And uh, that was Billy Sharp. And I think, I think that's still fresh in the mind. And I think partly it was to do with, look, we've beaten them at Hillsborough. Uh, you yeah. know, let's make sure we win the series kind of thing. Yeah. And don't you know, don't throw that away by, by losing. But I think as it's the first game of the two this year, there'll be a totally different mentality yeah. about it, do you think? Yeah. yeah, Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure we will start really well. I Is mean, there anybody in the opposition that, from uh, Blade's point of view, that you, you fear or you think, well, I hope he's not playing or... Adam Reach uh, is the man of the moment, <laughs> isn't he? Um, yeah. He scores some thunderbolts, doesn't he? Goals. He does, yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I'm not very uh, not very fond of Adam Reach in, from from a Blades perspective. In no. fact, I wouldn't mind Adam Reach in our team, to be quite honest. Um, no, there, there's there's uh, there's no particular player um, no. that, I, I, apart from him, that I would single out. That's you know, Barry Bannon last season, uh, I thought was was good for Wednesday, um, but he seems to have. Um, sort of lost form, doesn't he? Yeah, Barry, Barry Bannon, I, I think, you know, you, you look at the experienced players to perform for Wednesday and uh, they've been so inconsistent and erratic yeah. uh, as a team this season that, in fact, I can see uh, Lewis Buxton through the door, actually, there. He's waiting there. Would you like to come in, Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> I could see him through the door there. Here he is. Uh, a grand entrance will be made. You'll see a figure walking across your television you. screen. Uh, doing, it's nice to see you. Hey. Nice to Hello, see you. Lewis. Good to good to see you. Better late uh, than never. Yeah, yeah. A very public <laughs> sort of uh, very public sort of greeting. Yeah. What sort of a journey have you had? Whereabouts do you live these days, by the uh, way? I Lewis? live near Clitheroe in Lancashire. Clitheroe. Okay. Yeah. Because when I went to Bolton, we we moved up there, a bit of a countryside. And um, I met a client in Manchester, and we just got talking, and it, it ran off. I didn't, 
didn't check the time, then I got stuck in traffic. So Yeah, you've done the scenic uh, it, route yeah. across Derbyshire and everything. Oh, but he's made it. This is, John, by the way, this is John Osborne. Oh, yeah, John, John Osborne's hey. a journalist <laughs> who writes a blog on the blades. Uh, oh, okay. Naturally, and he's a lifelong Blades fan as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about your your new career, but of yeah. course, you've seen both sides of. And I've told I've told people watching, you've seen both sides of a Sheffield Derby experience. Haven't yeah, you? yeah, extremes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, the scoring now in goal at um, Bramwell Lane. Yeah, it's probably. Um, I think I only managed one own goal in my whole whole career. I managed to score it. Um, in the Sheffield Derby at Bramall Lane, so... Well, if you were going to do it, that's the time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> no, I'm sure they all did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah so that was a bit of a, you know, a nightmare, but um, eventually we turned it around and, um, you know, did well and ended up setting up a goal for the winner at um, Hillsborough. Chris and O'Grady, yeah. yeah. Chris O'Grady um, got his neck behind it somehow and put it in. And um, so it was kind of full circle, yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and, and so you all know um, the special pressures that come from this fixture and the mental um, taxation on a, on, a, on a player from being high profile, particularly a high profile moment like that. You've seen the both ends of it. And what was that first one like following that and the treatment you got and everything? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's something that over time you become accustomed to dealing with, I think, as a player. I think um, it's kind of like your worst nightmare, isn't it? And it's played out. And it, it, funnily enough, at half time, I think it happened. I think we were maybe we were two or three down you at half time. I think yours yeah. was the third goal. Yeah, so we um, kind of went three nil down. And it was like, I think at the time the manager was Brian Laws. And it, um, I think he thought I might go under, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he told me after, I thought done well I thought you're gonna go under so second half so at that point you know it was um, I don't know a bit of a change really I just thought you know I just looked at the game a bit different I was like you know if this is the the worst that can happen I don't you know nothing's really changed that much then you know I just at that point just saw the game a bit different and thought I'll um, um, I started to train a lot different after that point you've got your own um, team around you including a yeah. psychology coach uh, fitness, nutrition, everything. It changed yeah. your approach. I did, yeah. Um, you know, so I kind of like changed my outlook a little bit, which is a bit bit bizarre, you know, but eventually, yeah, I got got everything together and um, got a bit of a support team. Um, I think a lot of players do it, don't they? A lot of sports people now, it's it's kind of kind of the way the, the game has gone, every little advantage they're looking for. Um, and yeah, it started to make a lot of progress. Didn't, didn't quite... Um, you know, I've got a lot of injuries and that, that kind of thing. Um, so I didn't play the amount of games I'd, I'd like to, but definitely it was a, it was a big, big turnaround, I'd say, or, or it felt like it to me anyway. What does it feel like to be on the end of abuse? What, home or...? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think... We all know that. Yeah, I think, you know, again, it, it, depends, it depends on the player, you know. I think it's become... Obviously, I don't like it. I don't, you know, it's, at football, it's like accepted that you can have a fan call you or something, but in the street, that wouldn't, no. wouldn't fly, you know. It shouldn't be accepted. It shouldn't be accepted, but um, at the same time, you know, it's one of them things where fans pay their money and they, they kind of let loose and enjoy the game, the entertainment. So things are, do get, you know, you get carried away sometimes, so I, so I get that part of it. And a lot of it, it is done in a wind-up manner with a lot of a lot of fans, you know, rather mm. than being over the top aggressive. But um, yeah, it's not something that I think really should should be there in the way that it comes but it, over sometimes. It's something but it's, that people have to deal with mentally yeah. can have an impact, and you can help them now in your new role, which we'll consider in part two. I can say that there's been a, a very good positive response to your appearance tonight when I posted it on social media. Um, I don't know whether people have forgotten the own goal, but they seem to have <laughs> forgiven it. And they were talking in glowing terms about you as a, you know, a, an overlapping right back, right wing back. And certainly I think you had a terrific few years for Sheffield Wednesday. And we'll talk more about that part two. And your thoughts on that. Are you going to the game uh, tonight? I'm not going, no. On TV then? Yeah, yeah, yeah watching telly, yeah. Okay, so in part two we'll get a prediction from you. We'll 
keep you two boys apart because I'm sure you'll see it very differently. And it should be it. one guy who's usually on this progress fled the country. He doesn't want to be there. More on that as well in part two. See you. <laughs>